For our second installment of the inaugural Ring IQ Year End Review, Year End Recap, there are still that many more categories to cover. Moments in time that deserve a bit of reflection, a bit of consideration, some praise, some accolades. And, you know, we're going to kick off this second installment with our next category. The men's and women's 2020 upset, upset of the year. Uh, what an upset is in the sport of boxing, we're all familiar with that vernacular. When things don't quite go to plan, when conventional wisdom doesn't tell the story. There were quite a few upsets this year, even through COVID times. Some bigger than others. We kick off this category with the biggest upset in women's boxing in the year of 2020. This year, things didn't quite go to plan in this fight because the challenger had every reason to lose this thing given who they were taking on, that they were moving up in weight to take on a fighter that had never been beaten before, that effectively cleaned out their weight class and ruled for several years, not just as a champion, not just as a unified champion, but an undisputed champion. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jessica McCaskill's big upset win over the then undisputed welterweight champion, Cecilia Breakers. You can chalk this one up to fighting the right fight given the circumstances. Jessica McCaskill was known for being a very rough and tumble, physical pressure fighter. And against an aging fighter, even a distinguished one, even an unbeaten one, like Cecilia Breakers, that is the recipe for disaster. You don't, you don't sit, sit there and box with her. With her. You know, you, know, you don't, don't sit, sit there and make it a chess match. match. You, you rough, rough her up. You, you stay, stay close, close to her. You stay on top of her. Stay with her. You don't give her any room to breathe. Don't, don't give her the chance to make it a chess match. A, a cerebral kind of fight. The kind of fight that even an aging fighter stands a good chance of winning. Jessica McCaskill effectively upset the plans for Cecilia Breakers in a fight that I think most people were picking Cecilia Breakers to win. Jessica had every reason to lose this thing, but she did it. And that is Ring IQ's 2020 Women's Upset of the Year. Then come to the men's upset. And there were quite a few upsets. There were. Not, Not to be, be confused, confused with fights that, that you know, you know people, people were upset, upset about, about, you know, like, like Tyson, Tyson Fury, Fury putting that shellacking on Deontay Wilder. Well, I, wouldn't I wouldn't call that an upset so much as a fight that a lot of people were upset about. A lot of people on YouTube, Deontay Wilder himself seems pretty upset about it, but it's not exactly an upset. A lot of people already felt that Tyson Fury would beat this guy in their first fight. Ring IQ's 2020 upset of the year has to be January's Junior middleweight contest between Julian Williams and the then unheralded Jason Rosario. And that's what makes it upset of the year, you understand. That the banana was a relatively unheralded guy at that time. That Julian Williams was coming off of a career best performance the year before in May against the then unified champion Jared Hurd, a very durable guy, statuesque for the weight. You just didn't figure that after Julian dominated Jared Hurd the way that he did, that in his very next fight, Get his fucking ass kicked and lose his two world titles that he just won in the process. He just didn't figure. I mean, there were moments. There were unexpected twists and turns in several fights throughout 2020, like like uh, Lopez versus Lomachenko. You know, you figure that if Lopez is going to win this thing, it's likely by way of knockout, and it would happen early in the fight. You just didn't figure that this kid's actually going to win on the cards, that he's going to win a decision. I, I think in some ways... 
that, that qualifies as a bit of an upset. But, you know, that, that don't compare to this. I don't think anybody expected that Julian Williams was going to get his ass kicked the way that he did, beaten from pillar to post by an unheralded guy like the banana. That being said, that has to be Ring IQ's 2020 men's upset of the year. Let's move on to our next category, standout performance of the year. That's right. This encompasses a, a, a performance where the fighter didn't just win the fight. They didn't just dominate their opponent. They made a statement, a statement that, that left a lasting impression on the fight fans the entirety of the year. We're going to kick off this category with our women's standout performance of the year. There were several dominant showings this year in the sport of women's boxing. But, but one, one stands, stands out among them, one does, does. and that, that is the middleweight title, title fight, fight between Savannah Marshall and Hannah Rankin. This was a step up in competition for Savannah Marshall. This was the most durable fighter that she had faced in the entirety of her professional career. Career that she's still in the beginning stages of. And, and this was, you know, for, for you know, a world title. A vacant world title, but a world title nonetheless. And, and Savannah didn't just beat Hannah Rankin, you understand. She dominated her and subsequently stopped her. But the lasting impression on the fight fans that left them clamoring for that Clarissa Shields fight and becoming a world champion. Savannah Marshall made a statement. And what was a beautiful advertisement for not just women's boxing, but boxing overall, is she battered Hannah Rankin from the inside, from the outside, switching stances, fighting as an orthodox fighter, fighting as a southpaw. It was, put simply, a standout performance. It was, put simply, Ring IQ's 2020 standout performance of the year by a female fighter. We come to the men's standout performance of 2020. And, and this is going to be in association with the Furies, the Fighting Furies, one of which trains Savannah Marshall. The men's standout performance of 2020 has to be Tyson Fury's dominant showing over the then WBC heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder. A performance that effectively changed the landscape of the heavyweight division and, in effect, changed the narrative. Where it was all about Joshua versus Wilder, it quickly became all about Joshua versus Fury. And I'm being honest, I wasn't sure that Tyson Fury, given his candor ahead of the fight, I wasn't sure that he could pull this off. He claimed he was going to come forward on Wilder and he was going to knock him out. And, and I thought to myself, you know, he comes forward on Wilder, he's lining himself up for that big right hand. Tyson Fury knew his man. He knew that if the crowd's Wilder on the inside, Wilder can't get full extension for his punches, and he thereby can't generate any power. Deontay Wilder, if you crowd him, he just ain't got the coordination. He just ain't got the footwork to deal with it. While that performance might have taken place very early in the year, it left a lasting impression that is reverberating throughout the boxing cosmos here today, end of the year. Tyson Fury put on Ring IQ's 2020 standout performance by a male fighter. Congratulations, Tim. Congratulations to both the recipients of standout performance of the year in 2020 by both a male and female fighter. Congratulations to both Savannah Marshall and Tyson Fury. We then come to our next category, Ring IQ's 2020 breakout star. Breakout star. Of the year. This is not to be confused with the prospect of the year, as this has more to do with the fighters' star power, their ability to command an audience and have an effect on it. When it comes to Ring IQ's women's breakout star of 2020, that designation has to go to Terry Hall. It really does. You know, whether you scored the fight in favor of Terry or you scored the fight in favor of Natasha. It was a great advertisement for the sport. And, and, and Terry is gaining a lot of steam, a lot of momentum with the fight fans over there in the United Kingdom. She's fast becoming a fan favorite across the pond. That denotes her star power. And, and that's what this award is all about. That this is a fighter that has the kind of unique ingredients, unique qualities that, 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 that don't just make them a good fighter. You know, you can be a good fighter. That don't necessarily mean you command an audience. And, 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 and you know, Terry is one of those fighters that she's not just an aesthetically pleasing fighter to watch or an educated boxer. She has star power. She's fast developing a fan base. 
Gary Harper is Ring IQ's 2020 Women's Breakout Star of the Year because of the fan reaction to the Harper versus Jonas fight. Because there's a demand for a rematch. Because the fight fans across the pond are biting their fucking nails and waiting for that Michaela Mayer unification match. That is the hierarchy of thought that went into that designation. Congratulations to Terry for really making a splash in the year of 2020, and, and, and that's what it's all about, you know, making a splash. When it comes to the men's breakout star of 2020, Ring IQ's men's breakout star of the year, you know, that designation could go to a couple of guys, it could, but a guy who really made a splash this year has to be Australia's own Tim Zhu. That's right. He got out there during COVID played to a crowd of 16,000 fight fans that showed up to watch him lock horns with Jeff Horn. Not only did, you know, he give those fight fans what they wanted to see, put a dominant showing on. This has to be the guy who's played to the largest crowds the whole of this global pandemic during COVID times. He played to a very large crowd in the Jeff Horn fight. He played to yet another large crowd afterwards against Bowen Morgan. Very recently, the reception that this kid is getting in his neck of the woods, in his backyard, it really denotes his star power. It really denotes his je ne sais quoi, his charisma among the fight fans in the land down under. And that's why Tim Zhu is Ring IQ's 2020 breakout star of the year. Understand, this kid ain't even got a world title yet. He's not a world titleist, but he's already played to large crowds, very large crowds, about 16,000 fight fans with Jeff Horn, a little over 15,000 fight fans very recently against Bowen Morgan. That's really saying something, that he could draw that kind of crowd in this kind of climate, in this kind of environment, the excitement that he's creating in the boxing scene for the land down under. Yeah, Tim Zhu is definitely Ring IQ's men's breakout star of the year. Congratulations to both him and Terry. We then come to a not so prestigious award. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this, this, this award isn't necessarily intended to castigate its recipients so much as to highlight what took place and make note of it in the year of 2020. I'm talking about the mismatches, folks. I'm talking about those fights where very quickly it became obvious that these two fighters really shouldn't be sharing the squared circle. For whatever reason they are, whatever unique set of circumstances led to these two individuals sharing a ring with each other, it became painfully obvious very quickly that this should not be the case. And, and I reiterate, this is not intended to castigate either the matchmakers or the participants so much as, you know, how you felt when you saw it. I think the women's mismatch of the year, there were a few, there were, in the year of 2020, I think, I think the women's, the women's mismatch, mismatch of the year, of the year just, just so happens, happens to be the mismatch, mismatch that got the most attention. I'm talking about that Senecia Estrada versus Miranda Atkins mismatch. I want to say that this isn't Senecia's fault, really isn't the matchmaker's fault either. They were pushed into extenuating circumstances due to the original opponent pulling out of the Estrada fight. They had to come up with somebody on short notice. Miranda Atkins stepped up. Brave soul that she might have been, she didn't belong 50 feet from Senecia Strata. She didn't belong 100 feet from Senecia. It became obvious, opening bell rings, and, and, and you see the hesitation from Miranda. The fight didn't last very long, it only lasted a few seconds. A couple of combinations later, Miranda's laid out on the floor. Clear mismatch. And, and, and I'm just hoping that in 2021, we get to see Senecia against someone more formidable. I reiterate, it's not her fault. She was originally supposed to fight Jackie Calvo, but something happened to Jackie. Miranda stepped up, and, and, and Miranda out there, you know, she just looked like a dead in the headlights. You're talking about Miranda, a, a, a girl who's green, never fought anybody with a winning record, against what could very soon become the apex predator of this division. You know, she was just out of place. She didn't belong in there with Senecia. It's not Senecia's fault. She's got a job to do, and she fucking did it. Just that in doing so, you know, she, she, she made it quite obvious that this was a mismatch. Move over to the men's mismatch of the year. There were a few. But I think one that really stands out is the IBF mandated title defense in the 140 pound division between the reigning champion Josh Taylor and his mandatory challenger Apinum Konsong. This, like the Senecia Strata situation, 
it's not a situation where you can castigate Josh or the matchmakers. You know, if Josh don't take care of this guy, he's got to surrender his belt to him. Why the hell would he want to do that when he can easily beat this guy? And that's exactly what he did. He made short work of Apinim Kunsong off a very short body shot that made it crystal clear, in spite of Apinum Konsom being highly rated in the alphabet rank standings and the greatest scheme of things, this guy don't belong in the same ring with Josh Taylor. That's why I'm always telling you guys, don't confuse the alphabet's rank standings. You know, what fighters are paying sanctioning fees to move up those ranks so that they can eventually get a title shot. Don't confuse those rank standings with the divisional rank standings. The 10 or 20 best fighters in a given weight class. You know, divisional rank standings oftentimes have a hell of a lot more merit than what the alphabets provide. The alphabets have more to do with who's paying what sanctioning fees to get where in their career. That being said, you can't castigate Josh for fulfilling his obligation as a champion. He did what he had to do. It's just that he did it against the guy that, you know, didn't belong in the same ring with him. And, and that's okay because mismatches happen. That's okay because, you know, it's not like Josh picked this guy, you know. I was going to go with Gennady Golovkin versus Camille Zeremata for mismatch of the year when it comes to the men's category, but, you know, even Camille Zeremata lasted longer than Apinum Konsong did with Josh Taylor. That being said, you know, I don't know if this is something you congratulate somebody over, but, you know, that, you know Taylor versus Konsong, yeah, that, that has to be the men's mismatch of the year. With that, we effectively cap off the remaining categories in the inaugural Ring IQ year-end review, year-end awards. In spite of the global pandemic and, and, and what it did to the world, what it did to the industry, you know, they say the show must go on, and the show did go on. We had some highs, we had some lows, we had some, some highlights, we had some debacles. But all in all, the fight fans weren't deprived of fights in the year of 2020. There were some special moments, some special things happened, and, and congratulations to all of the award recipients. Hopefully, they'll have just as productive a year in 2021. Moreover, an even more productive year than 2020 was. Congratulations to everybody, and Happy New Year.